Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Elmo and well, this is my first voiceover. Yay! Um, I've been asked to do a voiceover by people on Amino, so hi guys! And I'm drawing Clever Gavin today. I'm currently lining him with a pink uh, Prismacolor Cold Erase pencil just to give him a softer line out at the start and to match with my pastel theme that I have going on with this piece. So I decided to draw Clavia because he's one of my favourite characters in Ace Attorney. Um, he's my bae. <laughs> and he's one of the easiest characters to draw and I just really enjoy drawing him. Um, I tend to go back to drawing him when I don't really have anything to draw, feel uninspired, art blocked, etc etc. Just because I'm so familiar with how he is and how he looks like and yeah. Um, interesting to note in this piece, I found that my style has been incredibly <laughs> influenced by Yuri on Ice. From the nose blushes to the to the eyes, not so much the hair but. Um, so it's interesting to come back to doing Copic work like this after so long because I haven't done a proper Copic drawing in probably years and it's nice to come back and to my roots drawing flowers, colouring flowers and seeing how much I've evolved after taking a break from Copic for so long to grow in watercolour which is a much more difficult medium and it forced me to approach things in a different light and uh, expand my knowledge of colour theory by quite a bit. So I'm currently lining him with a pencil now but I do do ink line work halfway through the piece uh, because I don't like inking things at the start anymore. Mostly because I find that it's way too restrictive for my colouring style and my approaches. <laughs> it may or may not be suited for you, but this is just how I think now. Um, the light box I'm using is a cheap one from Taobao, which was only 9 Singapore dollars. So if you're in Singapore and need a cheap light box, I'll link. I'll try to link this in the description below. I don't know if this seller is still around anymore. And I'm marking out the shadows with a blue marker. Um, I learned this trick from Miss Carrie J on YouTube and I find that doing this at the start actually helps me with the shadows because when I colour I tend uh, to forget where my shadows are or because I started Copics with colouring the typical tree marker way. In other words, you have three markers from the same colour family and just just only a part in order to blend and colour. So for example, to colour skin, I would have used an E000, E00 and maybe an E02 marker just to colour skin. So when you do that, um, you tend to make the skin very orangey and one dimensional, which isn't bad, but um, after evolving and growing. It's not what I'm looking for anymore. So this blue marker helps with that and gives the shadows that bit more depth. And later on I do go back with a blue marker to further bring that out. So the paper I'm using is a Dela Rowney Smooth Cartridge Paper. It's not entirely white like the camera suggests. It's actually a uh, toned a bit pink but um, in theory, this paper should have been um, good for coping markers since it's a thick 225 GSM paper and it's cartridge paper. But I found this paper to be incredibly streaky. So it was a challenge coloring the skin and not freaking out too much because of how streaky it was. Um, this is actually my second time coloring him. My first time I completely freaked out <laughs> and threw the piece away and then came back to it 20 minutes later after lining this piece and found that it was perfectly fine and the streaks too kinda blend out a bit. Uh, I also found that this paper is kinda weird where if you oversaturate a spot it means you colour the same spot over and over again, um, the spot turns grey with oversaturated colour 
and when you go back to it after a few minutes it's actually perfectly fine but um, this paper wasn't really my easiest paper I've worked with so not to self I will not use this paper again and attempt to hunt down my previous cartridge paper that I was using which I don't know why I put um, so for the flowers, like I said earlier, I was going for a very pastel scheme, so I have a lot of pastel pinks and greens and blues. Um, the blue mostly to tie the piece together with his eyes, since his eyes are blue. And I think having that bit of colour just really brings the piece together. Pink roses, okay not roses but uh, flowers, were kind of challenging because of the markers that I had. Um, the pinks weren't exactly the right pinks that I wanted, so uh, I had to make do and I think I did well with it anyway. <laughs> Same thing for the greens. Um, I lost my swatch book for my coping markers, so I don't remember all of the colours anymore, so as I was uh, colouring this, I went and swatched markers by looking at the caps first and then thinking maybe it looks fine, swatching it and repeat. And the uh, downsides of doing that is that I don't have the full view of the markers <laughs> at one go. So when I swatch one colour and then swatch another colour and find that the second colour is actually more uh, useful in this picture than the first, well, too bad for me because I probably used the first marker already. Um, but nonetheless, I think I managed to balance the piece out so there isn't an overabundance of dark green and neon greens and pastel greens, which I think it worked out in the end and I really liked how this piece turned out. Uh, for his hair, I'm going in with a yellow marker. I do go in with an E marker to make it a bit more realistic. But his hair was probably the simplest part of this entire drawing. Clavia's hair has always been one of my favourites to draw in the series because of the spirals and the curls. And it's an overall draw, you're just drawing it because it's so fun to draw. It's like drawing a very curly drill down his side of his uh, face. <laughs> For his shirt, I didn't want it to be completely black um, because I found that black, especially on pastel, uh, dows the whole piece down. So I went with greys and blues to try and emulate black but then I do go in with a really dark blue marker and in the end when I scan this in it actually looks like black. <laughs> so that's a mistake on my part but I guess I should let you all know that not to make this mistake. Um, I think I would have gone with a solid grey marker and then probably coloured it with blue afterwards just to blend it in instead. But oh well, <laughs> I'm still happy with how this piece turned out in the end. Uh, I do try to make the flowers a bit more purple, giving that, that purple hue and giving a purple background, purple or pink background on the top and bottom of the flowers just to give it a bit more depth from the light light paper which I think worked because it further made my colour scheme very pastel and I liked how that looked too because it looks like a soft glow of pink around the colours and it just looks so pretty on him <laughs> sorry I just really love how pretty Capia is it's a shame Capcom really didn't go into his storyline. So my next video is either an Inktober piece or a watercolour piece depending on what I'm drawing this week. Um, the figure skating has, season has started and Zuru Hanyu skated so I just might draw him in his Sami costume. Uh, we'll see how this week goes, it's gonna be a packed week. Um, I'm currently lining him with a brown micron pen. Uh, I don't like inking in microns, but since I lost my brown Copic multi-liner, I, I didn't really have a choice and I didn't want to break out the dip pen since it would be too much of a hassle to do so. Um, I don't like 
thinking with micron pants, especially colored ones, because there's only one size, which is 0 0.5, and I find that I don't like very thick line art unless I screw up, which in this case I do, because I don't know if it's the paper or the pen, but it ended up feathering a bit, so I have to go over the seam area just to make this look a bit more uh, smooth which in turn gave the piece a bit of line weight but I think we have done fine without it anyway. So I chose to ink halfway because of my colouring style from watercolour. In watercolour, I enjoy the very loose style and freedom that I had. So um, when it came to this, it's the same concept of me colouring and playing around with the backgrounds without fear of colouring outside the lines. Uh, lining halfway also gives you the advantage of, uh, especially in loose styles, a better idea of what to work on, what places look weird. In a way, the line art grounds you a bit and uh, brings you back to reality and realize some areas just need more work <laughs> on the others. Hence why um, I prefer inking halfway if ever inking at all. Sometimes I choose to ink at the end of the drawings but again that depends on the mood and that I'm going for and what I wanted to achieve with the drawings. My favorite style is probably thin line work with or no line work at all, but that's a bit hard to achieve without looking again look like a blob of colour or something. So going in with a light green marker to colour in areas that I missed and then with a blue marker to uh, bring out the shadows or the highlights or just places that I wanted blue. And I think this blue marker really gave the piece that bit of depth that it needed to make it look not flat at all. Um, when you colour with Copics, especially like what I've done, um, you tend to make the piece look a bit flat without extra colour. So hence the blue marker in the shadow areas and some of the highlight areas and it makes him look pop just a bit more and makes his hair shine just that bit more. Um, blue again ties the piece together with his eyes and just having hints of it everywhere makes it look a bit more pleasing to me anyway. And yeah, same with the pink, especially the pink. Um, I, it doesn't really capture at all. I think because it's so subtle and so light, but it's the same thing that I use as the background for the flowers. And again, it lends with helping to tie the piece together since there's so many colours going on. And I colour his hair with the E marker because I realised that he looked quite flat against the detailed flowers. And after doing that, I kind of also realised that now the flowers look kind of flat against him. <laughs> So, uh, oh well. Um, what I plan to do with this channel is probably attempt to make weekly speed paints, but that really depends on my schedule. Probably have no time for voiceovers either since I have a lot of issues with recording and space and it's just a bit troublesome to do voiceovers, but I may do voiceovers if time allows and if you ask nicely or if you have anything you want me to do or review, because um, I have a large collection of watercolour and art supplies which I don't mind sharing my opinions of, especially with watercolour, it's one of my biggest collections with over 10 brands. <laughs> Over the last four videos, you use, you see me use at least half of those brands anyway. So, uh, if you have any questions or reviews or requests to draw something, um, you can contact me on social media at Illogical Skittles or in the comments below, and I'll find the time or attempt to find the time to make the video. 
Um, I'm not really happy with the bottom flowers of this piece, mostly because uh, I'm using the bottom part for testing and experimenting and seeing if it works before applying to the top ones. And which is why uh, it looked kind of wonky, especially on the bottom part, but oh well. <laughs> I'm still happy with how this turned out despite all the mistakes that I made. Uh, interesting to note in this paper that uh, it's quite bad for blending, especially because um, if you turn it, if you turn my paper behind, it actually bleeds through quite a bit. And it even bled onto my desk, which was unprotected. Uh, it's not that bad, but <laughs> it was difficult and uh, the colors kept pulling and pushing each other. So there's some parts that look streakier than the others. And it was not a very nice look, but it still worked anyway. <laughs> and for details and highlights, I go in with a jelly roll pen because Clavier is a very shiny person, especially in the games, he's not a glamorous fuck with tons of jewellery and necklace, gaudy jewellery everywhere um, so I hope I managed to bring that out and in turn it also gives him a bit more depth and details <laughs> anyway, I'm coming to the end of my video the products I use is going to be in the description below as well as the link to that light box if I can still find it and yeah with that thank you guys for your support if you like my art please subscribe or if you have questions also ask me in the comments below anyway guys thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video